We got a red dot here. Hey, it's Sergeant First Class Fitzwater from the Cleveland Medical Recruiting Station, and I'm joined today by First Lieutenant Greg Tarman of the Cleveland Medical Recruiting Station, and we're fortunate to have Captain Dominic Homan, who is an Army Reserve dentist with us today. How you doing, gentlemen? I'm doing well. It's good to see you again. Good to see you, even though we're virtual. How you doing, Captain Homan? <laughs> Thanks for having me, Sergeant. Hey, great to see you. Great to see you. Really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to sit down and chat with us. Kind of get an idea and a feel for, um, you know, your jobs and duties as a as an Army Reserve dentist, but really also what's going on in these current times and and how you are dealing with COVID nineteen as a medical professional, a dental professional in uh, in today's world. It's got to be challenging, but we'll get into that in a little bit. But can you kind of uh, go over and and introduce us to you? I'm Captain Homan. Like you guys said, um, I went to Case Western Reserve for dental school, and uh, I've been in the Army now for over a year. I just finished some of my training with you guys, which was a pretty fun experience, but I got to get that in before the pandemic struck. But uh, I work at a practice in Norton, Ohio, which is west of Akron, and uh, I'm kind of in the process of buying that practice right now. So I'm kind of partially owner there. And that's where I spend my my days normally. But like I said, I'm in the Army Reserve. I love it. Having a great experience there. And uh, that's pretty much the background. And I heard the little one in the background. So yeah. you're married with a, with a daughter. How old's your daughter? She's two. She's two, two and a half. half. And uh, pandemic quarantine's pretty tough with a two and a half year old. <laughs> I have to admit. Probably a lot of walks and trying to keep her engaged is... Uh, is always a challenge, right? Yeah, that's right. What a good challenge. Yeah. It's a good challenge. Yeah. It's, it's a challenge, but also I would have to say that I also love having a kid right now because it's something to do. I mean, we're all stuck at home in sure. quarantine. It's like a family vacation for a few months. So it's not so bad. But Great, great. Yeah. So just a quick recap, uh, undergrad was at University of Akron. That's right. We were in Akron Zip. And then from there, uh, Case Dental mm -hmm. School. That's okay. right. Great. And then uh, graduate from there. And then you, you've been in practice for what, about two years now, you said? About yeah, almost years? three. Three years. Uh, July three. 4th was when I started. Okay, very good. I think Lieutenant Tarman has a question for you. Yeah. So, Captain Homan, uh, thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate it. But uh, just want to start out and ask you what was your engagement with medical recruiters while you were in dental school? Uh, how they reach out to you and what sort of interactions did you have with them? Yeah, so when I was at Case, actually Case and Akron, but the majority of it was at Case, the medical recruiters would come and speak to our class as a whole and kind of explain, you know, for each branch what they were about and what we would be doing as medical providers in that branch. So I had communicated kind of surface level with the Army, Navy, uh, Air Force, and kind of discuss with them how we can help as dentists and further ourselves by, by joining those branches. Um, I didn't sign up while I was at Case, but I did talk to a lot of recruiters. And to be honest, the main motivation I had, I have a lot of family history with the Army, Air Force, Navy. Uh, my, both my grandparents were uh, in, in different branches, my cousins in the Army. So... I've got a lot of kind of family experience and that kind of piqued my interest while I was there. That's awesome. Um, so you didn't sign up while you were actually at Case. Why yeah. wasn't it an option for you at that time? Why was it not an option for me at that time? Yes. At that time, I wasn't sure where I was going to be when I got out of school, actually. I was kind of considering doing a residency to possibly specialize. Um, I was also considering moving across the country. So I had a lot of things that were kind of up in the air and I could, didn't pull the trigger. Um, to be honest with you, I wish I would have because I really had enjoyed being in the Army Reserve and I wish I would have just done it and had them pay for my school while I was there um, instead of pulling the trigger afterwards. But like I said, I mean, at the time, I think I was just too unsure, but I wish I would have had the courage to just to just jump in at that time. 
and that and that's fair, Captain Holman. A lot of people, you know, you're trying to figure out where you want to be and what you want to do, and and you know, you're so hyper focused on your education at the time. So we get that quite often in in uh, medical recruiting when we're talking to our medical and dental students. It's like, you know, where do you want to be? How do you see yourself? Right. How can how are you paying for your education right now? And uh, so a lot a lot of people, uh, you know, it, it depends upon where they're at in life at the time. So. Let me ask you this. Do uh, you remember the first time we met? I do, actually. Um, how, how, did, how did I get in touch with you? So I believe it's actually through the medical recruiters that came to case. Is that right? That I was kind of on an email list? Right. So initially what you did is you signed what we call a leads card. So right. whenever we come out to the school and do a presentation or whatnot, uh, typically we have those individuals that may be interested go ahead and, and fill out a leads card. And that's what you did. And right. but that was like four years ago. Right. It was, that was a while ago. And right. then it so happens that I took a couple of leads cards and I said, let me go through these. And I know how things change based upon what, you know, kind of you just, you just uh, told us. And I said, let me reach out to a couple individuals. And I sent you an email and um, you responded. And then it, it kind of went from there, right? That's right. Yeah. I was just drawn in by your charisma, Southern <laughs> Prince Water. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I my, remember. My over the phone voice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Might not come through as well on camera, but uh, yeah. So yeah, I remember getting the email from you and I'd been tossing it around. I'd kind of contacted all the branches and frankly, you were the most responsive and you were the easiest to talk to and the easiest to get a hold of. and. It kind of went from there. I thought about it. I talked to my family, talked to my grandfathers, talked to my cousin, uh, talked to the people I know that are in the army, and I just felt like it was the right decision for me. So, so you had this conversation. So the really interesting thing that made our conversation very easy and uh, very on point was the fact that you did research. You kind of yeah. had an idea of what was going on, and you'll get into a minute, you know, what, what the other compelling reason was that you, you joined too. And, and that was mm -hmm. for some benefits and all that. But, um, you know, you did your research and you talked to those people within your sphere of influence. And, you know, there was also another individual that was uh, a key component of this. And he was one of your instructors at Case. And he just happens to be your company commander. Is that correct? Can you tell us a little right. bit about your relationship there? Yeah, I, to be honest with you, that really is what made me pull the trigger, is that uh, Colonel Dundon, who's the commanding officer for the unit that I'm in, he was one of the instructors that I worked with at Case while I was in school for years. Um, and I always liked him a lot. I, it's funny, I always gravitated towards him when we had to do something with an instructor. And I think he actually kind of gravitated towards my group as well, because we were together for two years, pretty much solid. Right. And the funny thing about it is I had no idea <laughs> that he was in the army at all, let alone that it was possible I'd be put in his unit. So when you told me that I should get in contact with the commander of the unit, so I kind of had a better idea of what I'd be doing, and you told me who it was, it, it was a huge surprise for me and it was very exciting. And I knew that if he was leading a unit, just because I know his character, that I could trust that it's something that I could kind of put myself into as well. Sure. And, and although I've stayed at a Holiday Inn Express throughout my life, I am not a dental professional, right? So uh, <laughs> it's very important for, um, for myself and for our team at Cleveland and Lieutenant Tarman to put you as applicants at the time into contact with those individuals that actually do the job. Because the bottom line is this, I can't necessarily speak your speak when we're talking about the dental side of things or the medical side. So it's important for us to be able to provide you that opportunity to talk to the individuals that actually do that. So uh, Colonel Dundon was a great resource for you. And again, it's just something, another aspect of our, uh, our coming together um, and it drove our conversation. And that was, uh, I really appreciate Colonel Dundon's uh, uh, ability to talk to you and yeah. set you up for success with that. I think Lieutenant Tarman has another question for you, Captain Holman. Yes, I do, I do. So uh, you talked about how a history of family service was part of your motivation and the driving force to commission. But uh, besides that, 
what other sort of things appealed to you about becoming a dental officer in the United States Army? Well, first and foremost, I mean, I would be remiss if I did not mention, I think anyone that is considering joining, you have to have a drive to serve the country. I mean, it's just, it's a part of it. It's a huge part of being in the Army, Air Force, Navy, National Guard, any part of it. Um, you have to be the type of person that, frankly, I'm sure we're going to touch on this later, but in situations like this, you have to be the type of person that is willing to jump in. You like to lead. You like to jump into the mix when things are not going the way they're supposed to be going. You like to be the person that goes in and tries to help people. Um, and frankly, in my opinion, that's why we took an oath as medical professionals anyway. But unfortunately, some people take that more seriously than others. And I think that by joining, you're surrounding yourself with a bunch of people that have those same ideals. They're all people who are willing to jump in and get the job done and do what needs to be done pretty much at any cost during situations like this, you know, as severe as this, or sometimes as, you know, minute as our missions when there's, we're not in the middle of a crisis. Um, so that was one part of it, but obviously another huge part is the loan repayment. I mean, the reason that I, one of the reasons that I initially started looking into joining the army is you guys have a fantastic loan repayment program. And frankly, dental school is expensive. I mean, most people are coming out with a couple hundred thousand dollars in debt. I know a case, it was almost a hundred thousand dollars a year. It's one of the most expensive schools in the country. So I don't care how much money you're making when you get out of school, you need some loan repayment help because it's just, it's a ridiculous amount of money that you come out of school with debt. And frankly, I think it's only responsible to try to look at ways to chip away at that. And this is, I mean, a fantastic way to chip away at it. Uh, I was wondering too, could you tell me uh, about the reserve healthcare insurance and how that has helped you uh, not just in normal times, but specifically right now when health is a priority in people's lives, especially when they have family and loved ones. Uh, you have your daughter that you obviously mm -hmm. love and want to take care of. So how's uh, the reserve healthcare insurance also helping take care of you and your family? Yeah, I mean, it's fantastic. There's absolutely no, there's nothing bad I can say about army healthcare. I mean, it's easy, it's easy to set up, it's extraordinarily cheap. I mean, I think that the healthcare that I had before I joined the reserve, just for myself, was almost $1,000 a month, and I'm a healthy 29-year-old male. But, you know, owning a practice, or for right now, being associated a practice and soon to own, you're not gonna have big corporation health insurance where you're paying a small amount of money and have a decent deductible. You're going to pay over $1,000 a month and your deductible is going to be $4,000. So basically you're paying for only absolutely extreme surgery insurance. And that's kind of hard to stomach. Um, now so I think. Now, so right now, Captain Hope, uh, Homan, um, TRICARE Reserve Select for our Army Reservists Essentially, you're paying $221 right around there a month versus that over $1,000 a month and then having that, that catastrophic uh, cap and all that. So, I mean, right. that's incredible. I mean, for Well, and that was just for me. The 221 is for my whole family. And that's the thing is that since I have joined, there have been numerous occasions where my wife and my wife has actually had to utilize the insurance a lot more than I have. And we have not seen a bill yet. So even though there's some minuscule deductible, I think it's like, I don't know exactly what it is. I want to say it's $300 a year. It's pitiful. We have, I don't think we've ever, ever had to pay anything because that deductible hasn't even come into been a factor yet. It, everything's been covered since we've, uh, since we've had the insurance. So the insurance is absolutely fantastic. I mean, there's no way to mitigate that. Yeah, so 221 for a family. And if, it, if you're an individual, a healthcare professional uh, joining the uh, commissioning in the United States Army Reserves, you're looking at $46. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. You know, we have a lot of independent physicians on the medical side that 
you know, are, um, you know, travel around and do surgery and all that, but they don't necessarily have coverage. They have to go out and source the coverage, but right. You know, it's just incredible opportunity when it comes to uh, healthcare in the army reserves. Well, and furthermore, kind of along those lines, another thing that people gain from big corporations is retirement plans. And we don't have retirement plans if you're an individual provider. I mean, we have to do that ourselves. We have to hire a guy that does our wealth management. And don't get me wrong, I have that too. But it's very, very convenient and nice to have something that's set up by, you know, what we're going to consider the big corporation, which is the Army, where I can just dump a large percentage of my Army paycheck into that and have an actual retirement plan that I don't have to mess with. I don't have to manage a portion of my pay goes into that retirement and is matched by the army, which having a match program when you are own your own business is fantastic. I mean, that's great. So I appreciate that as well. That's two. As far as I'm concerned, the army fulfills the tri the big trifecta of responsibility, in my opinion, that I then don't have to do myself as an individual healthcare, paying off my student loans, retirement. Those are the three things that if you're a responsible adult, you should be trying to pay off. You should do for your family and for your future. And the army takes care of all those things for me. That's great insight. I mean, it, it pretty much takes the responsibility right out of it because they do it for you. And that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Great. Lieutenant Tarman. Uh, so right now, uh, you talked about you're currently serving in the reserve. So your your dental officer, what's your day to day? So when you attend your battle assembly, uh, show up to your unit and you're interacting with the soldiers, uh, what exactly are you doing uh, when you're there? So our unit's a field dental unit, which means that primarily our missions focus on being in the field. Um, because of that, obviously, we're not in the field when we're in our battle assembly, but most of our battle assembly is training for situations we are in the field because we actually deploy a decent amount and we actually go into the field a decent amount for a dental unit. We have a lot of guys that have pretty awesome experiences where they've been to Afghanistan and we set up these huge tents that have portable dental units that pretty much have like solar powered equipment. Um, and most of our training is focused around making sure that all of our equipment works properly. We can get it set up, get it torn down. We know how to interact with our staff because obviously the relationship between a dentist and his staff is extremely important, much more so maybe even than other medical professions because they are our, they're our second set of hands. They, they literally work with us and are essential in everything we do. So getting to know our staff, making sure they're trained properly, making sure that in an emergency situation, we all know what our role is and what we're able to do and how to do it. That's the focus of our training so that in situations like this, I mean, this is our bread and butter. We are made to be able to go to remote locations and do our job effectively. So in a situation like this, where we need to mobilize people to be in remote locations in the United States, we're already comfortable working outside of our own little office and helping people. Absolutely. I mean, I think you put that perfectly, uh, just describing how you train up for crisis situations where mm -hmm. you're going to be required to rapidly uh, deploy and set up somewhere and provide those services that uh, they're your specialized skill. No one else can do that besides you. So I know we all appreciate that you guys put in the hard work when you need to so that you're ready to complete your mission. Um, appreciate you guys. <laughs> with that being said, um, we're in a uh, unprecedented situation right now with uh, the pandemic and COVID-19. It's, it's a global, it's spreading around the world. Uh, and it's affecting everybody. There's really no one who I'd say is untouched by it. How is that affecting your dental practice? It's, it's the number one most talked about thing by every dentist in private practice or even corporation, like corporate dentistry, Aspen Dental type dentist in the country. I can almost guarantee that. Um, every single day we have new, just like how the governor or the president updates everyone every day, 
The Ohio, Dental, the, the Ohio Dental Association, as well as the American Dental Association, put out updates, if not every day, every other day, that change our directive of how we're able to take care of our patients. Um, it's a little bit stressful. It's difficult. Um, but obviously, our first priority is trying to make sure our patients are taken care of. And it's difficult to do that whilst taking into consideration how dangerous it is dangerous it is for them to even come to the office, let alone have any procedures done. So effectively, right now, my office is doing emergencies only, which frankly is the directive. I mean, you can't do more than just emergencies only, even if you wanted to. But I know a considerable number of dental practices are just completely shutting their doors because we've had several patients present that essentially are in the middle of treatment with another dentist, but are coming to see me because I'm willing to see them right now. Uh, furthermore, the Ac I think it was Akron General, I believe Akron General asked for volunteers in the area that would be willing to see essentially their overflow patients because in the event of a mass patient you know, influx in the ER, they don't want their dental patients in there because believe it or not, dental patients are a large percentage of emergencies in this country. Dental pain is bad. Um, and so essentially they are going to send the hospital patients to my practice as well to be seen kind of as an overflow to get them out of their, the emergency room. So I did volunteer to do that, which is kind of my own way of locally trying to do my part to combat uh, the coronavirus, but it, it has absolutely affected our practice. We, like I said, most dentists, if I had to guess, are just completely shutting their doors. A few of us are staying open, but it's, it is the bare minimum that we can get away with. Almost nothing definitive. You know, our Army values are loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, integrity, and personal courage. And the acronym for that is leadership. And that's exactly what you're doing right now is showing that leadership within our in our community because I I live in Akron so Akron General is where I would potentially go and the fact that you're doing that and volunteering your time on top of you know doing the emergencies at your practice and all that I, I just think it's fantastic and that you know that's the army way though you know service in action is the army way so um, again being a part of the values based organization is pretty is pretty cool uh, you know you talked about the the trifecta right Healthcare, number one number two loan student loan or payment and then three retirement uh, those are three things you said if you're a responsible adult adult trying to move yourself forward those are the three critical things that you need to take a look at mm -hmm. and um, I would like to ask you this uh, Captain Holman um, what else would be compelling for someone uh, maybe in your situation, uh, that's a dentist, that what would be compelling for the Army Reserves? Uh, something that they could look at on top of those three things, that trifecta that you talked about. What else would be out there? What is compelling yeah. to, be, to join the Army Reserve if you're a dentist? Correct. Correct. Well, like I said, I kind of touched on this, but for me, it's being around like-minded people that are willing to kind of put the mission first and that we really have no room in the army for profitability or anything like that. And frankly, it's refreshing to be able to work in a capacity where you are purely a healthcare professional. In those situations, you are working with assistants that you know are gonna dive in there with you and help in emergency situations because that's their duty as well. I mean, I love my assistants, I love my staff. We have, I wanna say 13 or 14 staff at my office and they're great. But they did not take a medical oath to jump in in pandemic situations. So frankly, I'm not surprised in the slightest that some of them are afraid right now and they don't want to come to work because this isn't what they signed up for. But that is what we signed up for in the Army. And it's nice to be around a bunch of other dentists and assistants and hygienists who are ready to jump into the fray with you. Um, and like I said, without any profitability in mind, with simply the only objective being how can we help people and get them back 
into doing their own mission as quickly as possible. Well, I, I appreciate and I appreciate all that. That is that is some good information. Um, <laughs> you know, let's talk about this real quick uh, before we move to closing. And that is, you know, you brought up uh, one thing is the opportunity to practice pure dentistry, right? So in a typical practice, you know, everything runs through insurance, whereas in the Army, we're not driven by profits, like you said, profitability and all that. Um, we do evidence-based care as well. So right. if you need to have an x-ray done or you need to have this or that done, you could go ahead and do that based upon you being the subject matter expert saying we need to get this done. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we absolutely, we have a lot more control. And frankly, I've actually been able to take some things that I've seen in the army, like some of the equipment that we use in my unit and take it back to my practice as well. Oh, because no. yeah, absolutely. I mean, like you said, the army is evidence based. So I can, I'm pretty comfortable in saying if the army uses it, then it's safe to use in my practice because I know that the army is doing that research. I know the army is doing their due diligence when they choose to use certain pieces of equipment or, you know, different techniques in doing things. So there have been a few things like the, the nomad x-ray units that they use that I'm considering incorporating in my own office, because like you said, we are the subject matter experts. And when we say, Hey, this is what we need. It's usually, that's usually what we get and we're able to do, which is fantastic. Lieutenant Tarman. Um, I don't think I have anything else to, to ask uh, all out of questions. I, you did a great job describing what it means to be an army dentist. And it really pleases me that uh, we're able to put someone like you into the army who wants to jump in and help in these, uh, these sort of situations. Uh, those are the people I want by my side. Uh, and I appreciate you and all your willingness, even in your community right now to s still be available for your uh, potential patients that have access to care. So thank you again for joining us today. And uh, I'll send it back to Sergeant First Class Fitzwater for closing. Well, again, gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, Lieutenant Tarman, thank you for the questions. Captain Holman, thank you for taking the time out of your day to be able to engage us and give us some feedback. And that feedback's important for us as uh, medical uh, representatives uh, that represent healthcare for the United States Army. We have to have that feedback so that we can do our jobs better. Uh, but again, it comes down to subject matter expertise, which you have. It comes down to a values-based, uh, the opportunity to work for values-based organizations such as the United States Army. And it takes someone that's willing to uh, take a step out of the norm and uh, take that calculated risk and, and see what the United States Army is all about. Um, and we appreciate you. We really do. I know we've had that conversation uh, many times, but it takes a special person to go ahead and raise that right hand and uh, take the oath of, of commissioning. And uh, on behalf of the Cleveland Medical Recruiting Station, Captain Holman, we appreciate you. And uh, thank you very much for your time. We look forward to seeing you in person next time. And during this, these unprecedented times, please stay safe, you and your family, and we look forward to seeing you later, uh, later down the road, sir. Thank you, Sergeant Fitzwater, and thank you, Lieutenant Tarman. I appreciate both of you guys being here for me today. Okay. If anyone out there has any questions on how you could become a uh, Army Reserve dentist or Army Healthcare at all, please feel free to contact us at 440-891-1800. Again, 440-891-1800, and we look forward to uh, starting the conversation with you. Gentlemen, have a great day. Army.